Okay, we're going to get started. Um, it's, it's a little past four, and I don't want to keep people waiting. Um, this is a town hall meeting about the Middle States reaccreditation. It's the second in a series of town hall meetings. Um, the first one was on the other side of campus, and I'm pleased to say we had 60 people at that one, um, and, uh, and including a number of people from East Campus. Um, but I think that our goal is to make sure that, that everybody, or as close to everybody as we can, is aware of what we're doing in terms of Middle States reaccreditation and has an opportunity to ask questions. So we're going to run you through, um, and I literally mean run you through, a PowerPoint presentation um, calling your attention to some of the highlights about this and then open this up for more of a, an interactive discussion about the issue of Middle States reaccreditation. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Charlie Robbins, I'm the Vice Provost here at Stony Brook, but I've also been asked to be the co-chair of the Middle States uh, reaccreditation process. So that's the hat that I'm, I'm wearing over here today. Um, along with me is, is Dan Davis, who's my uh, co-chair. Um, he is a professor in, in geosciences, and uh, we are really thrilled that, that he agreed to, to be a part of this process. And Lauren Tacky Cushing, who is our Middle States coordinator. Um, so, so she has been hired. Um, we actually stole her from another university, and um, we're very proud of that. And um, she has a lot of experience around both assessment and uh, specifically around middle states. So that that is being that her knowledge is being really helpful to us in, in terms of moving us forward. So just to set a, a reference point, um, we're coming up for our decennial evaluation, which means that we have to um, interact with the Middle States group basically every 10 years. Um, so 10 years ago, we, we ha came up for a review. Um, that was actually a focused review um, that, that largely focused on our undergraduate colleges and, and some of the work we were doing in, in undergraduate studies. To be perfectly honest with you, um, and I'm saying this even though the videotape is going, um, at that point I was over here because I spent the first 20 something years of my Stony Brook life on this side of the street. And I would venture a guess to say that I had no idea that Middle States was here. Um, and our goal is to, to make sure that, that in fact people know what's going on because Middle States is not just about West Campus. Middle States is about our entire enterprise and, and so it's something that, that we really need to, to be a part of. So the, the, the time before that, Middle States was here 20 years ago. Um, and again, I was over here and probably didn't know that, that they were doing it. Um, but that was the last, comp what we call a comprehensive review. Um, so 20 years is a long time in the history of, of a university, in the history of, of, of anyone's life. And, and a lot changes and a lot goes on. So we really have a lot to, to really work on and, and look at. And that's what we're going to explain to you today. So let's just take a step back for a minute. And people often want to understand the context of this. So what's this middle states? What, what do they have to do with anything? So the federal government has decided that there needs to be some way of overseeing higher education, some way of understanding um, whether, in fact, universities, colleges, and it, it's really more than that. It's all programs post high school, so degree granting programs post 12th grade. So it could be a seminary. Um, it could be any kind of, of professional school, business school, anything past high school that, that grants a degree or a certificate comes under these standards. And so the way that this operates is that the country is divided into six regions. And we are located in the Middle States Association region, which is basically from Philadelphia up through New York, um, and actually down to, to, to Maryland and, and up through New York. They're located in Philadelphia. Um, and all post-secondary degree granting institutions that are physically located within that region are accredited by the, the Middle States Association of Colleges. So it, it 
looks at Delaware, DC, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. So you can imagine that it's, it's, it's a lot of schools, it's a lot of universities that really have to um, demonstrate adherence to what's called the same standards of excellence. And Middle States, and I'll review this a little bit later on, Middle States has a series of 14 standards of excellence that we have to um, demonstrate compliance with. And as I said a, a minute ago, it really is all aspects of our enterprise. So it has to do with undergraduate education, it has to do with master's education, PhD education, it has to do with all of our um, healthcare pr providers, so our, our clinics, our, our programs, the hospital, um, to the point that, that when Middle States comes and visits us, within one or two weeks of that, a team will also be going to SUNY Korea um, because those students will be receiving Stony Brook degrees, so they'll be going to SUNY Korea to, to see that, in fact, what we're doing there is consistent with what we're doing here. Um, and they will also be visiting Southampton and, and Manhattan, but that's a little less dramatic than going all the way to Korea. Um, so it really is about everything that we, that we do. Uh, when I was first asked to be a part of, of Middle States and to chair Middle States, I thought it had to do primarily with undergraduate education, and, and I figured that was my job, so I should say yes. Um, and I did, and then found out that it, that was only one little piece of it. Um, Although it is the piece that we went through a decade ago. It is the piece that we went through a decade ago, yes. Um, so what we need to do, and, and let me just say up front that this presentation, as well as uh, a great deal of other documentation, is available on the Middle States website, on the Stony Brook website. Um, so you can get all of these PowerPoint slides, as well as links to, to a lot of other valuable information. And that can be reached both right now on the university homepage, it's right uh, up front, uh, but it's also housed on both the President's web pages as well as the Office of the Provost web page. Um, so there's lots of ways to, to get that information. So what we're trying to do is to, is to really demonstrate um, that our programs, our, our services are in fact um, consistent with the 14 standards of, of excellence, that we are mission driven, um, that we have uh, a focus on student learning outcomes, um, that we have certain goals for the institution and they permeate everything we do. So they permeate what we do in the classroom, they permeate what we do in, in our health services, and they, they permeate what we do in our research labs, and um, they permeate what we do in all of our business functions. So it has to do with, with allocation of resources, um, it has to do, to take a step back, do we have enough resources, which of course you never have enough, um, but how do we use the resources that, that we have? Um, and are the, the staff, professional staff, um, faculty, and, and others organized in such a way that it helps us to move ahead and, and to meet our, our goals? So as I mentioned, 20 years ago we did a, a comprehensive review of the institution. Um, ten years ago, we did a focused review on the undergraduate colleges. Um, so we have some options there. Following uh, a number of us attending a meeting at, at the Middle States Commission in, uh, in, in Philadelphia last year, we made the decision, um, and we, well actually we made a recommendation to the President and the Provost, and they made a decision, um, that we would go ahead with a comprehensive review. We felt that, that this was a time of change for, for the university, that in fact um, the president has been here just for a period of, of three or four years. The provost has, at that point had been here for less than a year. Um, there were a number of people in leadership positions that had been here for, for relatively brief periods of time. Um, so we felt that it was a good opportunity for us, uh, a good opportunity to really look at what we do well um, but also a good opportunity for, for us to look at what we can do better. And we recognize that, that all institutions, um, all large institutions, um, there obviously have to be some things that we can do better also. 
Um, one of the issues that also gets asked about has to do with the, the issue of other accrediting bodies. And that, that's a, a real acute issue on, on this side of the street um, because all of the professional schools have external accrediting bodies. Obviously, the hospital has an external accrediting body uh, or many external accrediting bodies. Um, and Middle State's position on that is, and we also have schools across the street such as engineering and, and, and several other programs that, that are also externally accredited. And Middle State's position on that is that that's good information for them to know. And essentially we put that as, as a footnote in, in the appendix. Um, but that, that doesn't mean that those programs don't need to be looked at. So even though the School of Medicine just recently finished, or probably the, the most recently from all the schools, finished their reaccreditation by the AAMC, and, and we're really pleased with that, um, that doesn't mean that we don't have to discuss the School of Medicine. They don't take what the other agencies do as, as evidence that, in fact, the 14 standards of, of excellence of, of middle states are met. Um, all of what we do now needs to be evidence-driven. Um, we need to prove a track record for what we're doing. We need to prove that, that, the out, that there are outcomes, that they're measurable, that in fact we measure them, and then most important that we use that information to inform our decisions going forward. Um, so for those of you, unlike me, that were aware of this process previously, um, it's very different than what it was. It's much more rigorous than it was. Uh, more than 70%, than 75% of institutions that go through it now have to have follow-up secondary reports because there are questions raised. Um, and it, it's, it's absolutely not a rubber stamp. Um, they're really looking to understand what we're doing um, and not just us saying what we're doing, but that we need to have proof of, of what we're doing. And part of this, I mentioned before, has to do with pressure from, from the federal government, but there's also pressure coming from the public that, in fact, higher education is responsible in, in, in what it does, that, it, that it's delivering what it says it's going to deliver. Um, there's lots of money that goes through higher education, and both in terms of student loans, in terms of research grants, in terms of indirect support. Um, and there really is an opportunity for us to demonstrate our worth and, and what we do. So we put together a planning committee to really begin to, to take a look at, at what we do and how we're going to do this. And as I said, uh, Professor Davis is, is my co-chair in this enterprise. Um, but you can take a look at this. And I'm not going to read through this, but we, we really try to have uh, some broad representation to have people that from both sides of the street to have faculty, staff, and students represented on the planning committee um, to in ensure that, that we had some people from colleges and schools that have recently gone through accreditation that can help us a little bit with that um, and what that experience has been like. Um, and this group has been meeting regularly now for, for well over a year. Um, in, in working on this and, and trying to, to really produce um, the kind of, of report, the kind of self-study, and, and get us through this process in a way that, that meets everybody's expectations. So for the academic year 2011-2012, we spent um, all of our time working on a self-study design plan um, that we needed to submit to middle states that once they approve that would give us permission to go ahead and, and undergo the full self-study. Um, and it took us a year, um, literally an academic year, to put together this plan and get it to be the kind of document that we were happy with. Um, we tried to get, I sound like a, a student, but we tried to get it this big and it ended up being this big. Um, and it is, again, if, if, any, if you want to read it, it has some really interesting information about Stony Brook, I think, about our university and, and um, as well as what our plans are, and that's available on, on the website. As I mentioned, um, we have tried to make this a process that is as transparent as possible. We want as many people to know what we're doing, so we've made, um, since this slide was done, we've made several more, so we, we've made upwards of 65 public presentations about middle states now. 
Um, and so we, it, it's a little hard for us to think of, of who doesn't know about middle states, but we know there are lots of people. Um, but any group that we are invited to, um, we don't always, we're not attached, so sometimes it's just one of us or two of us. Um, but we will come and, and do presentations in, in your faculty senates, in, in your um, any kinds of organizations that you have, union meetings, other kinds of meetings. Um, we really feel it's in all of our collective best interest um, to, to be able to do this and, and make sure that people know about it. Middle States has set the bar for us that they want to be able to walk across the academic mall or walk out of any building um, on this campus and stop anybody and, and say, can you tell us where we are in the Middle States process and, and get a, an accurate answer? We're not sure that we're going to get there, um, but we're working very hard to make sure that, that there is a, a good core of people who, who know what, what's going on. Last May, May of 2012, we had um, the Middle States Vice President, who's our liaison, uh, Tito Guerrero, come here. Um, he was here for, I think, two days or two and a half days. He reviewed our self-study design plan. He met with our planning committee. He met with the president. He met with the provost. He met with a, a group of, of faculty and staff. And he met with a group of graduate, undergraduate, and professional students. Um, and, and following all of that visit, um, he uh, did give us, he couldn't do it on the spot, but he did ultimately send us a letter um, accepting the self-study design plan. He had some minor suggestions, which we, we changed. Um, and, and he then sent us a letter accepting um, our design plan and allowing us to proceed. Um, we had the opportunity to, to go to the Middle States Annual Meeting in, in Philadelphia last week, um, and uh, Dr. Guerrero was there, and I went up uh, after a session to introduce myself again, and I introduced myself, and I started to say I was from Stony Brook, and he said, oh, you're from Sea Wolves. Um, I knew Dexter would like that. Um, so it was like, that, that's right, I'm from Seawolves. Um, and remember, Seawolves you liked, so we'll do well um, in this process. But it was, it was good that he did have that recollection and, and remember that, and it was, at least there was a connection there. Um, so with that, go ahead to undertake the, the process. We were able to, to hire Lauren, which as I mentioned before, has been, been, been wonderful for us and critical in our process. Um, and we've just about finished the search process uh, I looked to Dan because he was, he was uh, handling that, uh, for two full-time data analysts. So that, that will be working with us, hopefully starting um, as close to the, the first of the year as we, we can get it through the process, um, that will be working with us to really help us have the evidence that we need to prove, in fact, compliance with the standards and, and what we're doing. We've decided, and, and again, um, this isn't unique to us, this is a, a model that's followed uh, in many universities, but we've decided that the best way to deal with the 14 standards was to come up with, with a series of working groups that are charged with, with really looking at these standards. So each working group has two co-chairs who are working with uh, around 12 to 14 members um, we kept it at that number because we felt that, that in order for it to be really a working group, um, we needed to keep it relatively small, although I'm, I'm really pleased to say, um, and actually some of the groups have grown since then, but I'm really pleased to say that we, we had an incredibly um, great response from the campus community, had many, many, many more people asking to be on committees, uh, people who have been volunteered by others to be on committees, um, then we actually were able to accommodate in the committee. So right now we have 80 people, more than 80 people, working on looking at the standards, uh, working within their, in their groups, working with the planning committee. And our goal is to have a draft from each of these working groups. We're getting an initial draft actually um, of their plans within the next month and then an actual draft from each working group by the end of, of the, this spring semester, the 2013 spring semester. Um, that will then give us a chance to, to work on that over the course of the summer 
to try to put that together so that, uh, and again, I know this is something that all of you who have gone through accreditation know about, trying to put all those pieces together and, and have it come out sounding in one voice, um, speaking for the university. And um, we also launched on Middle State's website that I referred to before, and we had our first town hall meeting in November. Um, and this is our second town hall meeting um, now. We wanted to make sure we were on both sides of the street because it's really critical. I think it's critical for the, import, the, the future of the university, but it's, it's critical for middle states that we really demonstrate that we are one university um, and that Nichols Road is just a road that runs down um, through the campus, but in fact that we're one university. So this is, and again, I'm going to go through this very quickly because this is all available to you um, on the website and, and there's nothing you need uh, less than to have somebody standing here reading to you. Um, so there are 14 standards, there are six work groups, so they're divided up um, among them, but this gives you an idea of, of the kinds of things that we're looking at and who have been selected as, as the co-chairs. Um, and again, all of the co-chairs represent um, faculty and staff, um, but there are undergraduate, graduate, and professional students on all of the working groups. Um, so we feel that, that we can get an, an, a, an adequate representation uh, of all of their voices. So working group one, which is uh, the actual planning committee, is taking responsibility for looking at mission and goals. Uh, mission, vision, and goals is critical because everything else has to emanate out of that. Um, we have to prove that, we're, that we work in, in a way that is derived and consistent with our mission and goals and, and how that's done. Work group two is looking at planning, resource allocation, institutional renewal, uh, institutional resources, and standard seven, which is institutional assessment. Um, there are a number of areas where universities that do have issues, um, sometimes have trouble, and the two areas that that is likeliest to happen are institutional assessment, which is standard seven, and student learning outcome assessment, which is standard 14. Um, so we are, are focusing a great deal on the two assessment standards, and, and you'll hear a little bit more about that as, as we go forward. And again, for you from professional schools on this side of the street, that's uh, a little bit easier for you to wrap your heads around because you're required by your external bodies to have learning outcomes for each course, to have learning outcomes uh, for your programs. Um, so it, that's different than some of the, the other academic programs on campus where, where there's more of a culture shock, culture shock, culture change, um, which becomes a culture shock um, that, that's needed. Work group three is looking at issues of leadership and governance, administration, and the issue of integrity. I want to say two things about that. Number one is that I think integrity, and I've made this really clear to, to all of the working groups, while integrity stands as, it, as it's a, a standalone standard, um, I believe that integrity and, and discussing integrity has to be woven through all of what we do because it's very difficult to say um, that we do anything well if we don't do it with integrity. So I, I think it's critical that we demonstrate integrity in all of our processes. Uh, and in terms of leadership and governance and administration, I, I just want to make one point. Again, at this meeting in Philadelphia, the keynote speaker was Nancy Zimfer, the, the SUNY Chancellor. Um, and, and she was talking about accreditation. She was the keynote. And one of the points that she made to us um, not as part of a keynote, but when we were talking to her before she went up, was that, that some of the SUNY campuses have had trouble or issues with middle states around leadership and governance and administration simply because it is such a complicated system. Um, so that she was urging us to, to use care and caution um, in how we describe really our governance structure and how what goes on here relates to, to um, the president, relates to the governing body of the campus, um, the Stony Brook Foundation, how it relates to um, Albany and the SUNY board and the SUNY trustees and the chancellor and her staff. Um, and, and that, 
You know, that I think, and, and, and Dan, I think, made this a, a good point of this in a meeting yesterday. Um, that's something that we can do. That's something that, that's, that it's not easy, um, but it's something that we can look to some of our SUNY colleagues that have, have gotten through this process and done well and asked how they've explained it um, and, and try to learn from that, as, as well as just really for us to begin to understand what the process is. Um, whereas, again, the assessment is more of, of, of a cultural issue. Um, and, and so th that's how we, at least in our minds, separate that. Standard four is looking at student admissions and retention, student support services. And again, um, that's critical for you to think about because we will have to demonstrate consistency between the services that are available on the services and processes that are, are in place on West Campus as well as on East Campus. Um, I, for one, know that there is some divergence, um, but we are, are working uh, very diligently to, to, to really bring those as close together as, as we possibly can. Working Group 5 is looking at, at one standard. Um, they're looking at the, the standard about faculty. Um, and it has to do with uh, how we, do we have the appropriate faculty? Um, are they appropriately, is their background appropriate? Are they appropriately trained? But, but beyond that, and much more important, do we support the faculty? Um, do we give them the resources that they need to carry out the mission as we ask them to do it? So if, if we're asking them to do research, teaching, and service, are we providing the support and resources necessary for them to be able to do that effectively? Um, do we look at issues of diversity within the faculty and, and the teaching staff? How do we do that? Um, and one of the things that, that we gleaned from looking at, at how other major AAU universities respond to middle states there are lots of differences. They all do it somewhat different than each other. The one thing, and I literally mean this, the one thing that they all did uniformly was to have a group looking at the faculty standard alone. Um, so while we didn't necessarily understand why that required its own working group, we weren't quite ready to buck that um, too much and, and, and tie it to other things. So we, we left that as a standalone. And then finally, um, group six is looking at educational offerings, is looking at our general education program. And, and uh, at least one of you were at a meeting this morning about general education program. And we're in the process of changing that. We've been working on it for five years. Um, I wasn't involved five years ago, but I've been involved since I've gone across the street. Um, and we had hoped to have it in place by fall of 2013 before Middle State comes. At, at this point, it, it looks much more likely that it will move, put in place for full-time freshmen, uh, full-time first-time students coming in the fall of 2014, um, which will give us a little bit more to explain because we won't have a track record with it yet. Um, but we'll have to at least explain what led us up to this process and, and how we, we got here. Um, one of the, what we were meeting about this morning is that um, it's, it's our position, and I don't mean middle state's position, it's the office of the provost's position, um, that we would like to have one general education standard uh, for the, the campus. We believe that, that having students graduate with a BS or a BA um, degree from Stony Brook should mean that they have successfully been able to, to complete a certain course of study. Um, right now, we have many pockets on campus that don't follow general, the same general education program. And, and so we're working very hard to see that, that programs on East Campus, West Campus, uh, professional schools, um, non-professional schools, um, that students try to closely align their general education requirements with, with the campus general education requirements. That was a little editorial off topic. Um, related educational activities, anything we do that offers a certificate program, that offers a certificate from a school, I, I know, again, um, what I'm most familiar with, I know social welfare has, has 
a number of, of certificate programs. I believe the other schools on this side do also, as well as on the other side. Um, so we have to be able to demonstrate how those are consistent with our mission, how those are consistent with what we do. And then finally, the assessment of student learning. Um, and that is one that, that we will have to pay attention to. Um, again, the professional schools, I think, are ahead of, of the other schools, um, not necessarily because they want to be, but because they're required to be. Um, and I'm not, I want to be very clear that I'm not criticizing anybody um, because the expectation wasn't there. Um, so we need to, to really help people to understand. And, and I should have said this earlier, and I'll say it about assessment, but it's really about this whole process. We have to help people to understand that for us to do our jobs well um, as educators, we need to have learning outcomes. Um, the only way then that we know if we're effective is that we have learning outcomes that are measurable. Um, and so the changes that we, we may be making for middle states in the short run, I think are really changes that are, are making this, this a better university and a stronger university for all of our students. And I'll, speaking on behalf of Dan and myself, we both made it very clear, independent from each other, but we both made it very clear to both the president and the provost that the only way that we would get involved in this process and the only way that we would ask lots and lots and lots of our colleagues to get involved in this process is if in fact we had their assurance that this was not a, a, a process to sort of just check off boxes, that this was a process that was really going to impact this institution going forward for the next decade. Um, and they have given us their assurance of that. We, we have taken that um, absolutely at face value and, and believe that we are, are really in a good position to move Stony Brook as, as positive as the trajectory is that Stony Brook's been on, and there's no doubt that it is. Um, we believe that we can take it even further. We believe that we can uh, both accelerate the trajectory and, and, and have it pointing up a little bit more uh, by the things that, that we do in this process. So we, um, we are convinced that, that this is critical uh, for our institution. It's critical for us to be accredited for a, a lot of reasons, but it's even more in, critical for us to sort of pick up a mirror and, and do some self-examination. Um, it's been a long time. Uh, again, some of the programs and colleges and schools have done it independent from each other. Um, but our goal is to move outside of these silos and, and really take a 10,000 foot view of where we are as an institution, where we are as an enterprise, and, and really put that together. I'm not going to read to you um, the definitions of all the standards, because again, you, you can do that. I just want to highlight the timetable, um, the timeline that we've been following, and then, and then hopefully open this up for, for questions. So we started back in the summer of 2011. Um, it seemed like we had lots and lots and lots of time ahead of us. Um, and all of a sudden, now it, it's like almost 2013. Um, I'm not sure how that happened. Um, but we, we are making good progress. We're actually pretty much where we had planned to be. So we had our design plan. Everything takes a little bit longer than you think it's going to be. And, and I think that's just true of everything. Um, and there's enough of a cushion that we can, we can have that things take a little bit longer or a little bit longer for people to get back to us and, and, and still be, be in line with where we want to be. So we've gone through our, our, our work in terms of the self-study design plan. Um, we had that approved by, by Dr. Guerrero. Um, we've appointed our, our working groups. We've appointed our co-chairs. Our goal is by the end of, of this next spring semester that, that we will get our initial reports from, from the working groups. Um, what we'll also have the opportunity to do is uh, to describe to middle states the kind of evaluators that we would like. So what we've asked for, and, and this has come directly from the president on behalf of the committee, um, is that we've asked for people to come who come from AAU universities. Um, so they have some understanding of the kinds of things that we do. 
We, we've asked that they come from AAU universities that have a health sciences center and preferably a hospital attached to them so they would understand some of the, the mechanisms for, for how that works. Um, we've asked that the chair of the evaluation team preferably be a president of an AAU university. Um, and from, there, from that point on, it's now up to middle states to come up with both the chair of the team as well as the members of the team. Um, the only say that, and I put say in quotes, um, the only say that, that we would have is if, somebody, if we felt that somebody that was appointed to evaluate us had some kind of issue with us. Um, they used to work here and left on poor terms. Um, and, and the president didn't feel that they could, you know, look at us really, you know, in a, in a fair, objective way, that kind of thing. But other than that, um, it's up to middle states to decide who comes in as, as an evaluator. And, and we've been told that um, we should expect a team of a chair, the, 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 the evaluation chair, and 11 members. Um, to come here for a week um, to really determine that in fact what we put in the self-study is in fact real. Um, we have a great writing department here and I guess they want to make sure that this isn't a product of their fiction uh, course. So we will have to um, be meeting and, and many of you We'll, we'll be asked to meet with, with representatives of, of the evaluation team when they're here. Um, and with 11 people here for a week, they really will have an opportunity to look at, at a lot. Um, there, there's no question about that. They will then, before they leave that week, um, they will then give us at least an interim report of what they thought. Um, and again, that, that mirrors much of what you've experienced in your own accreditation processes. And then beyond that, um, in June of 2014, 2014 um, they will then, so they will be here in, in spring of 2014, um, and by, by the June 2014 meeting of the commission, they will submit their findings to the commission. Um, and it is then up to the commission to decide what the outcome is. Uh, our hope is that we will get full 10 year reaccreditation. That is our, our absolute goal. That, that is what we want to accomplish. Um, we understand that, that that can come, that can, can be given 10 year reaccreditation, no strings attached, that's it, um, you did great. But we recognize, and, and this is through absolutely no fault of anybody, um, that they may have, for instance, concerns about the general education program. So if we're changing it, they, they may ask us, can you send us in two years uh, an updated report uh, with evidence that, in fact, the new general education program is meeting the goals that, that you put in place for it, uh, and we'll have to do that. And that would be absolutely fine. Um, if we got that, um, we'd be very pleased. And so that kind of thing is fine. We also can, if we are deemed as out of compliance with, with only one of the standards, with any one of the 14 standards, um, they can put us on warning. Um, and there are a number of, of schools currently on warning, including Suffolk Community College, um, which is currently on warning. And when a school is on warning, they have, and this is federal guidelines, they have two years to address whatever the deficiency is. They have two years to address the one or more standards that, that are outstanding. Um, we don't even want to let that into our minds as a possibility. Um, so we're going with full reaccreditation for a 10 year period. Um, we believe that, that, that a university such as ours should get that. Um, but a lot of responsibility falls to all of us as a community to be able to, to demonstrate what we're doing, which we think is very positive, 
um, what we're doing to even improve on what we're doing, um, and, and then have the evidence and be able to measure it and have it influence our, our decisions going forward. So finally, um, this is our, our, well, this shows you where our web page is. Um, that just shows that the students are really excited about Middle States coming. Um, that's not really true, but, but I think it's funny to say it. Um, but this is where you can find the, the, the portal to, to enter the Middle States site. When it's not here any longer, then um, you will be able to find it, as I said, on both the Office of the Provost and the, and the President's Office websites. I'd like, Dan was able to do these screenshots for me um, to make sure that we're able to do that. We have um, really positive messages from both the President and the Provost talking about the importance of reaccreditation. Um, again, both for the institution um, now to, to meet the expectations of the federal government, but also moving forward in, in the future. And then finally, and this is, this is really important to us, we've set up a, a Google Mail address um, that we monitor on a daily basis. So anybody in the campus community can either with their name or not with their name, um, send us any questions they have, any concerns they have, anything that they think that is involved in these 14 standards that Middle States, we might, the Middle States Committee might be concerned about um, and should take a look at. So we've gotten, um, we've gotten only a handful so far. Um, some of them are quite interesting. Um, and, that, and that's, but I can assure you that we are taking them all very seriously. Um, where appropriate, we're assigning them to the individual um, working groups if they're dealing with issues that, that they're looking at. Um, but it's a way for us, because no matter how hard um, we try to do this, um, our view is limited by our perspective. And that's why it's really important to, to have everybody have an opportunity to open it up and, and really see where we are. And I see from, from the hour that, that I've gone a little bit longer than I had anticipated doing, and so I apologize to, to my colleagues for that. But with that, um, do you have any comments, or should we just open it up? I, th I think we can open it up. I think it is Im important to emphasize that although uh, this initial phase, the middle states accreditation phase, is externally driven, this really is about something that's ongoing. And that's, it's not just to be viewed as something uh, imposed upon us, but really uh, an incentive to be doing things we want to be doing better anyway in order to uh, continue to improve the university. Other, do we have questions? Yeah. Actually, on the I'm sorry, to cut you off, but the um, the web page that we set up actually has a documents list, which gives you all the documents from Middle States. So that might be helpful as well. Charlie went over the different standards, but the actual publication from Middle States gives you the fundamental elements that are supposed to be met, and also there are documents um, on there regarding student learning assessment. And then we have a link that goes through the timeline for the whole process goes through all the working group members and additional information about the working group. So feel free, that's all online. And if you can't find something you're interested in, just drop us an email. Thank you. Any other questions? Dexter. Right. More, more than 75 percent, and that, and that number is increasing each year. That's why the slide was a little outdated. Um, this past academic year, more than 75 percent of the institutions that were reviewed had some follow-up. And we're talking about major institutions. So Cornell was up, Princeton was up, um, not fly-by-night programs. So it, it, it's something to, to be anticipated. 
Um, and you know, so we will not be, be surprised if there's a follow-up report requested. Um, our goal is, is to avoid going on warning. Um, but you're right, it doesn't mean that there's a serious problem if we have a follow-up report. And I think we need to help people be prepared to understand that in, in, in anticipation. And, and, and it really is appropriate that there be this level of scrutiny. There is a lot of, uh, among other things, federal dollars uh, involved. So it's appropriate that there are uh, these accrediting um, organizations uh, like middle states and that uh, as they are held to high standards, they hold the universities to high standards. And uh, again, that whole process can become uh, a real positive uh, in, the, in the future because this is not, all of this isn't gonna end once uh, we get, we anticipate being a positive uh, report back from middle states. Uh, the whole uh, idea behind this is that this will be uh, an ongoing process of, of doing all of this self-evaluation uh, better than we have in the past and using it better to uh, continue to improve the university. The other piece of the context, and I didn't mention this before, is that, and if you pick up literally any newspaper uh, at all, uh, the, the, the public also has concerns about higher education and higher education dollars. So I think we have to be able to demonstrate our both integrity but also our effectiveness in, in what we're doing. And, and we have to be able to measure that. And I think there are fair questions. And, and we need to be prepared to, to, to respond to them. And Kathy? I, I think I'm it's sorry. also fair to say that um, many parts of the university and many things we do, we do a much better job of doing what we do than documenting how well we do what we do. And I think we need to do a better job at that end. Absolutely. Yeah, my question was going to be the idea of when you talk about the entire university community being able to give input or give, you know, uh, express concerns, does that, would you define community? I mean, are you looking at communities of interest, for example? So broader than it's, it's, you know, the truth is that it's, it's, as broad as it could be. So we won't know if, if we get an anonymous question at middle states at stonybrook.edu, you know, if someone says I'm a faculty member and I'm concerned about this or I'm a student, I'm concerned about that, I'm a staff member at, at the medical center and I feel that, then we'll know. It could be somebody, you know, who lives three towns away from here. Um, or lives in California that wants to, I mean, we really won't know. Um, and it's designed, even though that probably makes it a little harder, um, it's designed that way intentionally so, so that people can feel comfortable raising questions um, and, and asking ab about issues and calling our attention to things. So community is defined literally as broadly as, as it can be. Right. We will let let me let me just speak to that for a minute. We we will clearly and, and that's a strength of theirs and that's a strength of ours. So so we will look to um, our medical school, nursing, social welfare, um, we will look to our engineering program and we will do that. Um, the reality is that we need to demonstrate how all of those pieces hang together. Um, in, into one university. And again, and now I really sound like an undergraduate student, um, the Middle States self-study, um, which is different than most of your studies, but the, the Middle States self-study for the entire enterprise is, is held to less than 100 pages. Um, and then we can have some appendix, which is going to be very big, I can assure you. Um, but we really need to be very succinct and very clear in, in what we're saying. So we can use quotes, we can pull different programs together, but again, our goal is to show this as a whole, as, as, as one, um, and how we're able to, to show the assessment. Because the fact that the assessment is successful in social welfare or, or in medicine doesn't mean that it's successful in undergraduate biology. Um, 
in, in our case, it actually is successful in undergraduate <laughs> biology, but, but we need to be able to show that, or in philosophy or history, where, where it may be a little bit different. Um, and that's what our job is for, and actually not our job, that, that's what the community's job is for the next year to be able to, to pull all of that together. Any other questions? Well, I thank you for your attention. Thanks for coming. <laughs>